Hey everyone, ClaytonHairDetrailer.com and today we'll be taking a look at and I'll show you how to install Roadmaster's diode wiring kit on our 2020 Ford Escape Hybrid. Our diode wiring is going to be one of the key components in our flat toe setup. So we do have the base plate, our tow bar, our safety cables, our supplemental braking system, our breakaway switch, and our wiring. You might be asking yourself why do I need diode wiring? The wiring diodes are awesome because it lets us retain our factory lights. We don't have to have any magnetic lights or any lights sticking off the back of our vehicle. We do get to utilize our factory lighting while we're flat towing. And one really awesome feature is that those diodes prevent back feed from our signals on our RV. Another awesome feature of our diodes is everything is tucked behind our taillight. So again, nothing is going to be visible and our vehicle is still going to retain that nice factory look. Our wiring is required by law. This is going to allow us to travel safely down the roadway and make sure that everybody else can see when we're braking, turning, or driving at night. And in terms of installation, this install really isn't that hard. The hardest part is just finding a good place to run your wiring. And while we're speaking about installation, I'll go ahead and show you how we installed ours. To start our installation, we're going to want to run our wiring from the front of our vehicle to the back. It just gives, a little, gives us a little bit more slack when we're breaking our diode connection and then we don't have to come back and try to clean everything up. So I'm going to tie a little bit extra here in the front and then I'll show you how I ran my wires. So I took our wires, ran it back underneath our base plate, came up through here, up through the base plate, then back behind that plastic housing, and then pulled our wires down here. I zip tied it to this bracket. And it is very important to make sure you stay away from anything hot or moving that might damage our wires and that we don't want that. <clears throat> so I ran that wire back under this frame. And the nice thing is that our wheel well cover will keep this wire nice and tight from moving around. I left the wire right here. We do have that underbody panel that'll keep this protected. And then I ran this wire underneath this bracket I'm going to come back and zip tie it to this bracket and I went underneath this underbody panel all the way back to right about here. Then I pulled our wire out, went up into our frame, oh, I wanted to stay over all of our suspension components and everything, pulled that through up here, followed some wiring that way. Pulled it straight through this bracket, down into this hole, followed the frame rail back to here. Now we're ready to run our wires up to our taillights and make our connections. Before we lower down our car to run our wiring up, you do want to make sure to separate all of your wires. Our white wire is going to be our ground wire, and I'm actually going to go ahead and ground that now. There's a ton of open metal down here to make our connection, that way we can make sure we have a good ground wire connection. I'll probably run it somewhere right in here. And then we want to separate our green wire because that's going to run over to our passenger side. So we'll separate that. And then we'll run our yellow and our brown wire up to our driver's side taillight. To run our airline tube down, we're going to want to remove our taillight. There's going to be a little plastic cover here. We can come in with a nylon pry tool you just kind of have to work that around until you can get it underneath that cover. Then you push down, that cover will come off. Next, we can grab a flat blade screwdriver and just take this little screw out. These tail lights are super nice because there's only one fastener. Now, with that, tail, with that screw removed, we can just pop our tail light out. You do want to be careful not to scratch your paint. We can just pop this tail light out like so. Since our tail lights don't have quick disconnects, we are going to have to hold it the whole time. But we can drop down our airline tube. You can also use a rope with a nut on the end or anything just to help you be able to pull these wires back up underneath our vehicle. So now with our airline tube connected to our wires, we can go ahead, pull our wires all the way through. Make sure you get them nice and tight. And now we can make our connections. So our yellow wire here is going to be our taillight signal and our purple wire, wire here is going to be our brake light signal. 
We'll be connecting our brown wire to our yellow wire. It is important to keep the end of the brown wire that we cut because we'll use that as a jumper wire to run over to our other side. So we can cut our yellow wire, then we'll grab wire strippers and strip that back. You do want to trim back a good amount and then we'll fold it over since our wires are kind of thin. So now I'll go ahead and twist our wire, fold it over. And again, this is kind of tough because you have to hold the tail light. But if you just take your time and be careful, it'll work out just fine. Now I can grab our spade connectors and we'll add a spade connector here and crimp it down. You do want to make sure to squeeze pretty hard. That way our connection stays strong. And now we're ready to add our diode and complete our factory circuit. The outside is going to point towards our tail light. So we'll plug this spade connector in. Again, it is kind of hard to work here because there's not a ton of room. We'll grab our one end here and plug it in. And now we're going to go ahead, cut our brown wire. We're going to strip back both sides, spin them together, and add it to the big yellow spade connector. Push it on, and then we'll crimp it down. With this being a bigger connector, you do want to squeeze pretty hard. Get a little tug, then we can come back and plug in the other side. Then we'll take the loose end of our brown wire, drop it back down through, and then pull it out the bottom. We're now ready to cut our purple wire. Go ahead, cut it here, strip back both ends, and then add our butt connectors. Now we're ready to make our connection going out to our tail light. Again, you want to make sure you're using the outside. Then we'll connect our end wiring. That'll complete our factory circuit. And then we can connect our yellow wire to the purple wire the same way that we did, but we're only going to use one instead of two with the brown wire. Now we can plug our yellow wire in. It can be kind of tough depending on how these connections are made on your diode. So our connections are made, and we're ready to reinstall our tail light. You want to make sure you get this grommet pushed back. So now we got our tail light pushed back into place. We can add our screw and that plastic cover. Then we'll run our wires from the driver's side over to the passenger side. Now we're going to go ahead and run our ground. I'm going to ground it right here. Like I said earlier, there's a ton of metal there, so we know we're going to get a good connection. We'll go ahead, trim back our wire, strip back our wiring. Add our ring terminal provided in our kit, and then we'll crimp it down. Give that a nice tug, make sure it has a good connection. Then we can grab our self tapper provided in our kit. I'll go ahead and get it started so it's a little bit easier. Now we can back it out. Then we can hold our ring terminal in place and secure it with our self-tapper. You want to make sure it's not wiggling or moving around after the fact. Now we can go ahead and run the rest of our wiring over to our passenger side. I did have to extend our brown wire. I used the yellow that we had cut off, used a butt connector, and then wrapped it with electrical tape. That way we have enough slack to get it up to our tail light. I ran our wiring from our driver's side to our passenger side up behind this heat shield. It'll give me a lot of different places I can zip tie it once we get our wires pulled up and we know everything's final. So I'll show you how we run our wires up and make our connections. Now with our tail light removed, we're going to do the same process of running our airline tube down through the back of our vehicle. Again, you might have to move around just to get it to come out where you want it. Want to make sure not to drop your tail light. Then we can pull our airline tube down, attach our wires to the end, and pull it up. Now we can pull our wiring up. Just pull it until there's no more slack. We're just going to stick this off to the side and then place our tail light back. And I'm just going to double check and make sure that our wiring isn't hung up on the exhaust or anything that's going to give us more slack. 
Our wiring functions are gonna be the exact same as they were on our driver's side. Our purple wire is gonna be our brake light signal and our yellow wire is gonna be our tail light signal. So we'll be connecting green to purple and yellow to yellow. So I went ahead, made our connection for our running lights. Now I'll make our brake light connection. Now with our brake light signal connected, we can go ahead and reinstall our tail light in the reverse order we took it apart. So now that we have everything hooked up, we can go ahead and hook our wiring up to an alternate power source and make sure everything works. We'll start with our tail lights. Then we'll do our left turn and our brake lights. Now we can move over to the passenger side and make sure everything's working there. So we'll check our tail lights, our brake lights, and our right turn. With all of our light functions working correctly, we can now travel safely down the roadway. That's going to do it for a look at an installation of the Roadmaster Diode Wiring Kit on our 2020 Ford Escape Hybrid.